Spanish regime, 1521-1898. Spanish colonial motives were not, however, strictly commercials. The Spanish at first view in the Philippines as stepping stone to the riches of the East Indies or the Spice Islands. But even after Portuguese and Dutch had foreclosed that possibility, the Spanish still maintained their presence in the archipelago. We have the reasons for colonization to G. Historians use a standard shorthand, the gold, God, and glory describe the motives generating the overseas exploration, expansion, and conquest that allowed various European countries to rise toward be power between 1400 and 1750 Ferdinand Magellan arrived in the Philippines in 1521. Magellan launched on the islands of Cebu, claiming the lands for Spain and naming them Islas de San Lazaro. He set a friendly relationship with some of the local shiftings and converted some of them to Roman Catholicism. Si Ferdinand Magellan, siya ang kaunahong na yung nakapaglayag mula sa Europa o pakanluran patungong Asia. Ang unang Europeo na nakatawid ng karagat ng Pasipiko at ang namuno ng, ng una expedition para sa circumnavigasyon ng Dantik. Siya ang unang Europeo na nakalapag sa Cebu noong April 14, 1521. On the morning of April 27, 1521, Lapu-Lapu led 3,000 warriors in the battle against Portuguese explorer and conquistador Ferdinand Magellan, who led a force of 49 Spanish soldiers and 6,000 natives warriors from Cebu. Sa Lapu-Lapu ay tinuring na isang pinakatakilang figura na sila una kay Zizaya ng Pilipinas. Si Lapu-Lapu ay kinala rin sa pangalang Olipu-Lapu. Bayani ng Maktan at manulupig ni Magellan. Maglakbay si Magellan uh, papunta sa pinuno ng isla. Ito ay sinalubo ni Lapu-Lapu at doon nagsimula ang kanya. At sa laban ng iyon, natalo ng hukbo ni Lapu-Lapu ang buong hukbo ni Magellan. Napatay ng mga tribong sundalo si Magellan na nagkaroon ng halitang pampolitika at karibalang saman si Lapu-Lapu. In July 26, 1523, King Charles really agreed that the Indians who had been Pacified should to contribute a moderate amount in recognition of their vassalage. King Philip II, for whom the islands are named, had dispatches to a further expedition that extended in disaster. He sent out to Miguel Lopez de Legazpi, who established the first permanent Spanish settlement in Cebu in 1565. The Spaniards closed the parts of Manila to all countries except Mexico. Thus, the Manila Acapulco trade, better known as the Galeon trade, was born the Galeon to trade while a government monopoly. Only two Galeons were used, one sailed from Acapulco to Manila with some 100,000 pesos worth of goods spending 120 days at sea. The other sailed from Manila to Acapulco with some 1,250,000 worth goods spending 90 days at sea. Good day everyone, I'm Timothy Andre G. Aguilus, um, the second presenter, presenter for this Spanish regime. To continue the discussion, we have the encomienda, uh, which was introduced in the Philippines when Legazpi, in compliance with the decree issued to King Philip II, distributed lands in Cebu to loyal Spanish subjects. These men had helped conquer the Philippines. The encomienda was not actually a land grant, but was a freeboard from the kind under which Spaniard receiving his favor was given the right to collect, collect tributes or taxes from the inhabitants of the area assigned to him. The man who received this favor was called an encomiendero, the encomienda, therefore a public office. So what is the encomienda system? So the Gaspi introduced it. It is a form of forced and unpaid labor used by the Spanish authorities and settlers in the colonies of the Spanish Empire. So, in return for those laborers or the natives of, a, of the Philippines, they said that they will give 
military protection and opportunity to convert to Christianity. Na if we see that definition, parang yung definition lang nila doon is colonization talaga. They want, they just want to colonize the the Philippines for for first. It's an opportunity to favor them, and that led to different conspiracies, revolt, and uprisings. Uh, we have the Dundo Conspiracy was a plot of against Spanish colonial rule by the Galug and Kapampanga noblemen or Datus of Manila and some towns of Bulacan and Pampanga in the Philippines. It was led by Agustin de Legazpi, grandson of Conquistador Miguel Lopez de Legazpi. So, to conquer the Philippine Islands, they need to explore and some area accepted the Spanish rules and some declined. And one of these is the Kingdom of Tondo. Because they want, they don't want to be ruled by any other or foreign rulers, or and they know that they will be, they are going to be oppressed. And in 1600s, we have the Tumblot Uprising of 1621, also known as the Tumblot Revolution or Tumblot Revolt, it was led by Tumblot, Ababaylan, or native priests from the islands of Bohol in the Philippines. It was basically a religious conflict. Tumblot exhorted his people to return to the faith of their forefathers and free themselves from Spanish oppression. Way before these Spaniards land in the Philippines, may mga gods and goddesses na yung mga, or deities yung native Filipinas that they they worship tapos bigla-biglaan i-convert ng mga Spaniards yung mga natives into their foreign religion which is the Christianity and some of these Filipinos uh, that's one that thing that's why they led to different uprising so into the uh, so kaya may conflict of religion but at some point the Spaniards still success on converting the Filipino people through this mood of art uh, to this material or uh, that is called the doctrina Christiana so what is the doctrina Christiana and early book on the catechism of the catholic church it is the earliest printed book known book in the philippines so it is a type of a propaganda material that teaches the teaches christianity and in the uh, tobacco was introduced in the philippines in the late 16th century during the era of spanish colonization when Agustinian brought cigar tobacco seeds to the colony for cultivation in 18, 1686, William Dumpler visited Mindanao and observed that smoking was a widespread custom. It had also became, become the, an article of foreign trade with Dutch from the door and turned buying rice, beeswax, and tobacco from the Spanish colony. So, Spaniards at the time, uh, some Spaniards decided to the Philippines and they introduced different th foreign things to the Filipino people. Which one of these are the tobacco and it may become uh, an industry to the Philippines. And at marami pang iba-ibang mga bagay na inintroduce yung Spanish. Yeah, yung mga Spaniards sa uh, Pilipinas, for example, the food, first the teachings, the type of education, uh, the political system, and many more. That's why uh, today most of the culture and tradition of the Philippi the Philippines is some came from the or mostly came from the Spain. So in 1700s, Manila was the ecclesiastical capital of the Philippines, it became the center of all religious 
things. The government, governor general was a civil head of the church in this island, but the archbishop viewed with him for political supremacy in the late 17th to 18th century, the archbishop who also had the legal status of lieutenant governor frequently we won. So, uh, because the Manila is the capital uh, for those ec- ecclesiastical team, they have this uh, calls. They have this archbishop that has the power all over the uh, religious things in the Philippines, and sometimes it is much sub- uh, politically saying it is much supreme than the governor general or the head of the uh, Spanish rulers. That's why at that time, the Archbishop and priests are very powerful because of this mindset of supremacy. They are supreme because they hold the church. Augmenting their political power, religious orders, Roman Catholic hospitals and schools, and bishops acquired great wealth, mostly in lands, royal grants, and dev- devices formed the core of their holdings, but many arbitrary extensions were made beyond the boundaries of the original grants. So that time, hospitals and other education uh, is developed or schools are developed. Uh, and these schools and hospital hospital are being uh, managed by the priests that time that's why naging limited yung access and knowledge at some point access and knowledge ng mga native ng native Filip, mga native filipinos that time And another factor, kaya naging supreme yung mga priests, is you cannot defy them, defy them, especially their orders and their teachings. Kasi sinasabi nila, lahat ng teachings nila is came from the game from God. That's why they are very powerful. And because of this, oppression and the uh, unfavorable Spanish rulings, it led to the the re- re- revolt and rising of individuals. So we have Diego Silang I. Andaya, uh, was a revolutionary leader who conspired with British forces to overthrow the Spanish rule in the northern Philippines and establish an independent Ilocano nation. His revolt was fueled by the grievance team stemming from Spanish taxation and abuse and by his belief in self-government that the administration and leadership of Roman Catholic Church and government in the trade Ilocano officials. So, because of sobrang tagal na ng oppression and Spanish ruling, may mga taong hindi na ma- matiis yung severity ng ruling ng Spaniards. Pinapakita na nila na be, ng Spaniards na very favorable sa mga Filipino yung ginagawa nila. But in fact, uh, in fact, yung mga Spaniards lang yung mga yung nagigin sa nagigin. So, because of that, some of some want to be independent and doesn't want any ruling from the foreign. Then we have Francisco de Gohoy. Engaged by the refusal of Spanish friar to bury his brother, he led the rebellion against Spanish rule which lasted from 1744 to 1829. The rebellion which was also fueled by excess of the Spanish authority lasted for more than 80 years, the longest in the Philippine history. So, like that. Many, many revolt has been uprised because of these Spanish oppressions. Then, 
by the late 18th century, political and economic change in Europe were finally beginning to affect and thus the Philippines, Spain and thus the Philippines. Important as a stimulus to trade was the gradual elimination of the monopoly enjoyed by the Galleon to Acapulco. So that time, the economy in Spain is being uh, is changed or Jumihina, meaning affected yung, yung Spain. Affected yung Spain, affected yung Philippines. That's why Spain had no choice to open. So the Galleon arrived in Manila in 1815 and the mid-1830s. Manila was open to foreign merchants almost without restriction. The demand for Philippine sugar and abaca grew apace and the volume of export to Europe expanded even farther after the completion of the Suez Canal in 1869. Though. Before the galleon pain between the, Pilip- uh, the Manila and Acapulco is only exclusive. So, walang ibang foreign country na nakakapag-join ng, na trade na yun. But because of the pagkina ng uh, economy and it affects the Spain, the Spain led not choice to open the trade for the foreign merchants and by this time naging mas open na rin yung ruling ng Spanish ruling or mas favorable na rin sa mga Filipino people but meron pa rin uh, syempre meron pa rin restrictions then the limited higher education in the colony was entirely under clerical direction but by the 1880s many sons of the wealthy were sent to Europe to study. So the illustrados are being sent to Europe to know more. And because of that, uh, it led to reform the na- their nationalism and passion to reform the liberal atmosphere. Out of these talented groups of overseas Filipino students arose what came to be known as the propaganda movement. So, because of that uh, opening, naging open sa study abroad, so natuto yung mga anak ng mga uh, noblemen. They had the knowledge for a political and for the liberation of our country. And it led to establishment, establishing different propaganda movement. And that's all for my discussion. Thank you. Alternative studies as a Gumburza or Gumburza refers to the Philippine Catholic priest Mariano Gomez, Jose Burgos, and Josito Zamora who were executed by Garot in February 17, 1872 in Bagumbayan, Philippine by Spanish colonial authorities on charges of subversion arising from the 1872 Cavite mutiny. Kumburza incurred the hatred of Spanish authorities for fighting for equal rights among priests and leading the campaign against the Spanish faiths. They fought on the issues of secularization in the Philippines that led to the conflict of religious and such secular. The propaganda movement was a literary and cultural organization formed in 1872 by Filipino emigrants who had settled in Europe, composed of Filipino liberals exiled in 1872 and students attending Europe's universities, the organization aimed to increase Spanish awareness of the needs of its colony, the Philippines. Its prominent members include Jose Rizal. This movement's most brilliant figure produced two political novels, No Limitangire in 1887, which is Touch Me Not, and El Filibusterismo in 1891, The Reign of Greed, which had a wide impact in the Philippines. Cristiano Lopez Jean, publisher of La Solidaridad, the movement principal's organ, Mariano Ponce, the organization secretary, and Marcelo H. Del P- and compassed the t- activities of a group of Filipinos who called for political reforms in their land in the late 19th century, are produced books, leaflets, and newspapers, articles to educate others about their goal and issue. They were trying to solve 
and were active from 1880 to 1896 and especially between 1880 and 1895 before the Philippine Revolution began. Propaganda movement reform and national consciousness movement that arose among young Filipino experiments in the late 19th century. Although its adherents expressed loyalty to the Spanish colonial government, Spanish authorities harshly repressed the movement and executed its most prominent member, Jose Rizal. In 1892, Rizal returned home and formed the La Liga Filipina, a modest reform-minded society loyal to Spain that breathed no word of independence, was progressive organization created by Dr. Jose Rizal in the Philippines in the House of Loreto on Junco at Elias Street, Tondo, Manila. But Rizal was quickly arrested by the overly fearful Spanish exiled to a remote island in the south and finally executed in 1896. Meanwhile, within the Philippines there had developed a firm commitment to independence among a somewhat less privileged. The Liga Filipina was a group created by Dr. Jose Rizal on July 3, 1892 in the Philippines to unite the whole archipelago into one society with equality for Filipinos and Spaniards. In the Philippines, Jose Rizal tried very hard to make it a peaceful group, but the Spanish authorities considered it dangerous. On the night of July 7, 1892, Rizal was secretly arrested four days after its creation. The following day, Governor General Yulogo de Spejol ordered Rizal to be deported to the Pitan after Rizal's arrest, La Liga Filipina became inactive. Goals specifically the propagandist aims were the representation of the Philippines in the Cortes Generals, the Spanish Parliament, secularization of the clergy, legalization of Spanish and Filipino equality, creation of a public school government funded public school system independent of the friars. Abolition of the Polo Labor Service and Vandala Force, sale of local product to the government. Guarantee of basic freedom of speech and freedom of association. Equal opportunity for Filipinos and Spanish to enter government service. Recognition of the Philippines as a provider of Spain. Secularization of Philippine parishes, recognition of human rights. <laughs> Reinstate the former representation of the Philippines in the Cortes General or Spanish Parliament. Secularize the clergy, use secular or the diocesan priest rather than clergy from a religious order. Legalize Spanish and Filipino equality. Reestablish Spanish citizenship for Filipino. Reestablish the Philippines as a province of a Spain. Gershano Lopez Jena, born December 18, 1856 to January 20, 1896, was a journalist, orator, revolutionary, and national hero from Iloilo, Philippines, who is a well-known for his newspaper, La Solidaridad, Philippine historians regard as the triumvirate of Filipino propagandists. Of these three illustrators, Lopez Jena was the first to arrive in the Spain and may have founded the genesis of the propaganda movement. Jose Protasio Rizal Mercado y Alonso Riolanda, June 19, 1861, December 30, 1896, was a Filipino nationalist writer and reformist. He is widely considered the greatest national hero of the Philippines. He was the author of No Limitangire, El Filibusterismo, and a number of poem essays. He was executed on December 30, 1896. Marcelo Hilario del Pilar Catmaitan, born August 30, 1850 to July 4, 1896, better known by his pen name Laridel, was a Filipino writer, lawyer, and journalist. He was the second and last auditor of the La Solidaridad, the newspaper of reform movement. Luciano Lopez Jena founded the newspaper La Solidaridad in Barcelona throughout its course. La Solidaridad urged reforms in both religion and government in the Philippines and served as the voice of what became known as the propaganda movement. Ceri Zalayi Mercado wrote two political novels, No Limitangire, in 1887 
and El Filibusterismo in 1891, which had a weight impacting the Philippines. Lopez, Jena, Rizal, and Marcelo del Pilar emerged as the three leading figures of the propaganda movement. Although Rizal had no connection to the uprising or Katipunan, the Spanish military arrested him and after partial trial found him guilty of sedition and was executed by a firing squad in Manila on December 30, 1896. Marcelo H. Del Pilar was a Philippine revolutionary propagandist and satirist. He tried to marshal the national nationalist sentiment of the enlightened Filipino Elisador or Burgosis against Spanish imperialism. In 1882, Del Pilar founded the newspaper Giant Tagalog to propagate democratic liberal ideas among the farmers and peasants. In 1888, he defended Jose Rizal's polemical writing by issuing a pamphlet against a priest attack exhibiting his deadly wit and his savage ridicule of clerical follies. The Katipunan was a Philippines revolutionary. The Katipunan's a secret society open to both lessons and the middle class that employed. In August 19, 1896, the Katipunan was discovered by Spanish trials which resulted in the start of Philippine Revolution. Up in Central Luzon, the Spanish governor Bla Ramon Blanco, he proclaimed a state of war in the eight provinces are Manila, Laguna, Cavite, Batangas, Pampanga, Bulacan, Tarlac, and we be see that all covered by all Spanish. War had broken out between Spain and United States. After U.S. naval in the Battle of Manila Bay in May 1898, Aguinaldo is encouraged to turn Philippines with the help of aid. After the U.S. declared on Spain, Aguinaldo show a possibility that Philippines might achieve its end. On January 1, Filipino leader, it was on January 1, Filipino leader Aguinaldo, it was declared President of an Independent Republic on Manila. Philippine Independence Aguinaldo declared Philippine Independence on June 12, 1898 after the U.S. declared war on Spain. He returned to Manila on May 19, 1898 and declared it on June 12. When it became clear that the U.S. had no interest in liberating the islands, Aguinaldo's forces remained apart from U.S. troops. Aguinaldo was proclaimed President of the Philippine Republic in 1899, but the United States refused to recognize his authority. He declared war on the U.S. forces in the islands and was captured in 1901. He agreed to swear allegiance to the United States and left public life. His dream of Philippine independence came true in 1946 and he died in Manila in 1964. Malala's Republic The Malala's Congress was the constituent assembly of the first Philippine Republic and drafted the Malala's Constitution in September 1899. It met the Barasoin Church in Malala City, Bulacan, and drew up a fundamental law derived from the European and Latin American presidents. Aguinaldo was the president of the new country, popularly known as the Malala's Republic. Treaty of Paris The Treaty of Paris was signed on December 10, 1898 and ratified in the U.S. Senate in February 1899. But the only one vote more than the required two-thirds this was due to agreements of manifest destiny being defeated by the Termin anti-imperialist minority. The Treaty of Paris of 1898 was an agreement made in 1898 that resulted in Spain surrendering control of Cuba and sending Puerto Rico parts of the West Indies, Guam, and the Philippines to the United States. The cession of the Philippines involved a payment of $20 million to Spain by the United States, the treaty was signed on December 10, 1898 and ended the Spanish-American War.